uh, actually done a workshop live before. So if you have your laptops and everything, you can join me in this little workshop. Uh, so bear with me, I've, I've not touched PHP in a while, so... You're the PHP god. Fine, it's, there's still muscle mes there's some muscle memory there, so should we, should, should we fight? Oi. Stop it. Uh, anyway, uh, oh dear. Uh, okay. okay. Let me try and get my fonts right. Oops. So. Uh, you want to follow along in this workshop, you can uh, do so by uh, just opening your text editor and, and, and coding along. Um, so there's a guest Wi-Fi as well as again, so you can just join the guest Wi-Fi network and you can come along with us. Uh, right, so so this second part is about getting started with PHP 7.2. So just a quick show of hands, how many of you guys are still, on, uh, are you still, are you still using PHP 5? Right, 5, 5.1. So is it what five point six at least? Six. Five point six at least. Seven. How how many guys you guys already already on seven? Awesome. Seven point one. Okay. Seven point two. Latest one. All right. So quite a few. All right. Cool. So um, yeah. This is um, hmm. So uh, yeah. So for this workshop, I'll just be doing quickly how to get uh, a Docker container running with a, uh, I think Fujiwara has shown you a very elaborate setup where you have start with a base Linux and then install 7.2 and all that on top of it. But actually if you go to Docker Hub, uh, if you go to Docker Hub which is the place where you can find all the, the, all the open source and publicly available uh, Docker containers, hub, this hub.docker.com. Yeah, so this is where you can find all the publicly available Docker containers and you go to look for PHP, there's an official Docker container for PHP. So with this, you can install any version of PHP that you need. Uh, just for, for your testing, if you're already you're running in a containerized environment like on ECS or on, uh, uh, this, uh, or if you're running on a Kubernetes or something that already has a containerized environment, uh, you can actually just build a container based off one of these guys. So you, your base container can start with, one, with a PHP 7 or, or PHP 5. So you can, this will be a very good way for you to kind of like do some testing. Say I want to see how your project or, or code will perform in a PHP, uh, PHP 5 or PHP 7 kind of uh, environment, right? So you can use this as a way of, of experimenting uh, with different versions of, of, of things. So, I, I, sus I suspect some of those who are used to using PHP 5, you see using PHP 5 because you have code that is that uh, that uses uh, syntax which is deprecated or no longer supported in PHP 7. Am I right to say that? You s that you just hesitant to move to 7 because you are uh, you're unsure what what may or may not break. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, okay. Anyway, so. Uh, so using this way, I hope you can use this as a way of testing your code before you even jump into uh, uh, the next version of PHP. So for this, uh, we'll start first by down downloading Docker. And once you have Docker installed, you can actually uh, run this command. So if, and you also, sorry, you should check out the repo first. So there is a git repo which, is, which has all this thing here. If you go to the meetup page, you find a link. I posted a link to this repo, which is the getting started with PHP 7.2. Uh, so inside here, there is a Docker file. So as Fujiwara introduced you to the Docker file, the Docker file is basically a definition file which tells you how and what to uh, what should be included. So in this case, I'm actually building a, a Docker container, just simply two lines: uh, PHP 5, uh, PHP 7.0 CLI. So this one basically starts your Docker container uh, in, as, a, as a command line interface. So there's no, there's nothing too complicated about it. It's just a command line interface. And then what I'm doing here is I'm running a command, which is php-a, which puts your PHP into an interactive shell. How many of you are familiar with the interactive shell in PHP? Yeah, one, two, okay. So essentially it's kind of like um, in Ruby, there's a concept uh, called interactive Ruby, IRB. I think in uh, in Python there's also a, a rebel which gives you like uh, in, uh, which gives you also a interactive Ruby kind of Python kind of environment. IPython, I think it's called IPython. 
IPython gives you a very interactive uh, Python environment. So this one can, lets you get into that, uh, get into that uh, environment and then you can start coding stuff, right? So, uh, so let's try and get that running right now. Uh, so I'm in this folder. Is it is a font? It's a font clear. Okay. So um, right. So the first thing you do is once you che you check you checked out the code. Right. You run this command Docker build, which basically builds your container uh, with the with the necessary uh, uh, basically that Docker file that we just d d described, which is the Docker uh, dash dot cli. Right. So it basically, uh, this command will basically build a Docker container with a name, uh, getting started slash CLI, with a tag, that's a tag name, and where, do, where, is the root, where is the root folder, right? So I'm going to run this now. It's going to build a Docker container. Uh, this is, I've done, I actually built this last night, so it kind of like ran really fast. So, so what I've done here is I created a Docker container. So if I do a Docker image, images, it will show me all the Docker containers that I've actually built, and you will find that there is a Docker container here, which was just, which is built 21 hours ago. But yes, I actually ran it again, so it's kind of the same. Um, are you guys, anyone here following along? I mean, coding along with me? No, quite a few. Okay, one or two. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So, so once you have this, you can then run the command, which basically brings your starts up your Docker container in an interactive mode. So you have a docker run uh, dash it. I stands for interactive and t stands for start, you start the terminal. And I give it a name and I'm, I'm, I'm starting that specific container which I just, cre just created. Uh, okay, so I'm going to run that now. Right, so this puts me in the interactive shell so you see at the bottom here, this is actually the supposed to be an interactive shell. So if I type PHP info, you put ah, no, doesn't PHP info. Sorry. Aha, sort of. Let's try this again. PHP info. So always remember to put a semicolon. Yeah, so it basically tells you the what you would see in the uh, PHP. We run, try to run PHP info in the in the TTY environment like this. So it tells you all the config, all the stuff that's here. So you can echo, hello world. Right. So you use this as a interactive way of doing it. So the exit just uh, just type exit. And you basically get out of it, right? So that's pretty much it. And the second thing we want to try is to run uh, <coughs> a Docker container with Apache. So I'm going to build another container. This one is a, di it's a different file name. It's Docker Docker file dot Apache. So I run this. You pr prepare a Docker container, and then I can run the Docker container now. So it's basically Docker run. With, the, with a specific name, I'm mapping the port number, which is port 8080 on my, on my host machine to port 80 inside. So you basically run this container, uh, let me show you the, 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 the file first. So, right, so this is the Docker file that, that I'm gonna run, that, uh, which basically runs PHP 7 uh, with Apache. Oh, actually it should be 7.2. Okay, never mind. let's try this. Shouldn't be seven point two. Okay, let's try to rerun seven point two. Right. So with this, I should be able to create a new container. Docker build again, and it should download PHP seven point two. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So this is specifically what what happens when it downloads PHP 7.2. Oh, what's going on? Hey, hey. Mcrip. Oh yeah. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be using this. <laughs> oh, they change they change how Mcrip works in 7.2, no, no, right? You don't bundle anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh well, I can see, I just remove that for now. Um, so yeah, I'll just be building a container with 7.2 and I'm going to try and run it. I'm going to try and run it now. Okay, so uh, I just ran it and then uh, basically it's running in the background. So with a dash D, if you put a dash D when you try to run a container, it actually starts it and puts it in the background so it can get back into the shell. So if you type docker ps, which shows me what are the processes running, it tells me there's actually one container running in the background right now. And it's listening to port 80, uh, it's mapped to port 8080 on my local machine. So if I open that in my uh, page now, 8080, says hello world. At the same time, as I map this, I, as I map this, I also uh, map my current folder, the SRC folder. So the SRC folder is also mapped into var www html, which is where Apache will host the website. So if I open that page right now, um, over here, right, so here is a simple file. So let's change this to maybe my name, right? Uh, and I try and reload that page, it should then show my name. Uh. Sim quite simple. So, um, in the GitHub page, I actually added some links to uh, some two blog posts which I found which actually shows sample code, which I only, only which will only work on, uh, so, uh, which will show about the new features in 7.2. I'll just show you one of the blog posts. Right, so, right, so this one talks about the core improvements. Some of the core improvements in 7.2, uh, first of all, the type hinting. Now, when you write, when you create a function and you put uh, type, you can, if we, if we have been able to do type hinting for a while, but in 7.2, they also introduced the object as a, uh, object as a as a type you can do type hinting on so in a sense you can pass in any object into it and it should it should work right so in the case like for this example here there's two classes so in this case uh, it tells me this function test can then take in an object which is either of first class or second class so either one of them should should work right so I can try and copy this entire piece into the PHP file I run this again. Right, so so it says my name is Jim, my name is John. So it should run for both, even though it's saying I'm, <coughs> even though it's saying it's taking ob an object. Although I'm curious, will it still work if I don't extend from the same class? Mm -hmm. Will it still work? Let's try. Okay, still work. Okay. So it doesn't actually need to be extended on the same class. I think uh. it's, uh, is it synthetic sugar for STD class? Uh? May have been, maybe. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, any, any questions so far? All good? Just for fun, just for fun, I'm going to try and create a new, another container. And I hope this works. So I'm going to try to create another container. This time round, instead of using 7.2, I'll, I'll try, I'll try and run this container now with 7.0, right? So what, what it was before. I'm going to try and build it again, right? So this is this container is now built with 7.0. If I try and run that piece, oh, it still works. Oh, I didn't run it. Sorry, I didn't stop it. I should stop it. Right, it stopped and I'm going to run it again. This should be running 7.0 and shows an exception. So yeah, this is just to show you that, uh, that you're able to like test your code both in a 7.1 7 or 7.0 environment and change, switch it up back to 7.2 7 and see how that, how that will affect your code.
Right. Uh, can two Docker containers uh, share the same shared folder? Uh, you can. So basically, you can run two two containers. It's, it's just mounting your folder. You're just mounting your SRC folder into the container. So I will, let me try and, okay, so uh, let's, I'll, we'll do the experiment now where we have one container. So this first container that we built is uh, 7.0, right? Uh, and so let's say Docker PS. So we have one container running right now that, that listens to port 8080, and this is, this is running uh, PHP 7, correct? So let's, let's try and create, build a new container. Uh, so that I will reuse the same container the build container uh, command. So instead of, so here I'm building a new container. Uh, let me change the code first. So I'll change it to 7.2 uh, here. And then I'm going to build a new container. Maybe PHP Apache 7.2, okay? So this will build a, new, a different container, which, uh, which is using a, a tag PHP Apache 7.2, right? So now it has, so if I do Docker, Images, which shows you all the images that, that are built. You see there's one which is some uh, PHP Apache, which is 7.0, and the one which uses PHP 7.2. So if I now um, run, the, run the run command with 7.2, and instead of mapping the port 8080, I'll pop, map the port 8081, which I'll give it a different name also so it won't clash. Right. So if I do docker ps, you see that there are two docker containers running right now. One listening to port 8080, which has PHP 7, and docker container that's listening to port 8081, that runs PHP 7.2. Right, so let's hope this experiment works. So again, once again, 8080, because it's running version 7, it doesn't see this, it won't uh, work. Uh, that that, that uh, the type hinting with object that won't work. And can you help me click this? Uh, just that. Click any one or two. Let's be higher. I don't know. I might just go more closer there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, then so I'll try and run again. Localhost 8081. Right, so it's now running PHP 7. Point, uh, this is running uh, 7.2, which actually uh, that, that function works. Uh. So just for kicks, I, I mean, I could always change it up a little bit and just run... Um, PHP info, just to prove to you that it's actually, uh, I can run both live, like this is 7.6.2, and this is, you try again, walk closer to the, towards the door, glass door. Yeah, so, yeah, so have one running 7.0, 1.7.7.2. Uh, yeah, does it make sense so far? Okay, so let's look at another code sample, which is, uh, which shows uh, some new f new features in seven point two. So, return type. Right. So, um, object return type declaration. So, other on top of return of type hinting using uh, objects, you can also declare the return type. As well as as an object. So again, this this sample sample code here, we just copy that into the into the PHP file. So let's see how this. Uh, so basically, this is my class uh, creating my class, and you and you passing it to a test function, which takes in args and also returns objects, right? And basically, you will basically just contrively just return the object that you that you were looking for uh, that was inside there inside the class rather. So it's var. Right, so if I run this in a PHP 7.0 environment, yeah, it shows me there's an error here. So, you know, because object is not supported in 7.0, we try and run this here, it shows up okay. So, you can have one folder mounted on two containers, right, each running different versions of PHP, then use that at the same time to kind of test how your code will, will run on either one of the versions. So very helpful if you're doing testing and doing migration of your code from one version of PHP to the next version of PHP, right? I, did, I used to work in a startup where they were, for a very long time, they were still on running PHP 4. This is in 2012. La. 2012, it's not, okay, it's not that recent, but it's quite far, quite, quite long ago. We had like 18, 18 web servers running PHP 4 point something, I can't remember. No, sorry, it was 5.1, 5.1. 
So we and then we were like, oh, there's 5.3 out now. Should we migrate? But we were quite afraid that that something might break. Even though we have test coverage, some test coverage and sort of a bit of manual testing that we have tested on uh, some some uh, uh, staging servers which was using 5.3. We are still quite fearful of moving to 5.3, right? So which is kind of like, yeah. So anyway, uh, with something like this, you make it e a lot easier for you to do testing on either versions of uh, of PHP. Uh, yeah, so let's try and look at another code example. Yeah. Parameter widening. Uh, these are all a bit more deprecation. Deprecation of, of code. Okay, deprecation. Uh, anyway, both articles are quite quite extensive. This one is uh, just goes into three top top the top few uh, features. And in, and in the other blog posts, this one actually has a lot more code samples which shows you the difference, the new things that were introduced in, in 7.2. It covers a few same, uh, some first few things which are quite similar. Um, one thing that kind of surprised me was this one. So, if you do unquoted text like this, in PHP, uh, anything before PHP 7.2, you just uh, puke. And kind of like say you don't I don't know what's going on with test, right? With seven point two, seven point two, it probably shows a different error, but at least okay. Yeah, so people notice from change from notice to warning now, which is actually quite interesting. I thought it would throw in a exception altogether, but it actually doesn't. So right, so if, okay. So remember, quote, quote your text. Call your strings. Um, yeah, so both articles are pretty extensive. You should ch check them out. And if you are, yeah, so and the sample codes again are hosted on, our, on, my, on my GitHub, on our GitHub page. So you can check that out as well. So you can use the second one to run Apache and you want to just test in the command line, you can run the first, first one, right? And of course, I'll show you now how to stop your containers because right now it's been running in the background. I've got two containers running Docker, PS. Uh, which shows me two containers. I can stop them by referring to docker stop and I refer to the container ID which is the first one or I could refer to the name which I used to start it which is in this case was php my uh, my php papachi docker stop yeah we should then stop both containers. Um, how many of you guys are actually already using docker? In your development environment or your test your test environment, just so. production. Anyone in production using Docker already? No. Okay. So, yeah, it's still a little feel a bit iffy. There are some there are a lot of gotchas when you use, when you're using uh, Docker. For for one thing, your file system is not always going to be there. You know, your Docker containers when it dies, it, it kills, it re removes all the files from your from your file system. So be be careful. So what I've done here is I've actually mounted a folder from my whole system into the Docker container. So the files that I save will still persist. Or rather, I can write, write code outside and then it will still be there. But that's for testing. If you go into production, uh, you need to have what you call mounted. Uh, you, can create, you can create volumes. Uh, you can create volumes in Docker, in Docker, which will then become like a folder. Or you can even mount an NFS network file system into it. Right, as, especially for files that you don't you want to be, to save, right? Like say, for example, you're, you're uploading images uh, into into your, your your PHP server. You want a folder which is actually shared or stored uh, uh, that can will, will persist, lah. So so basically, you use uh, you can use things like NFS or you can even use S3, for example, to save your files, right? So there's a few there's a few more gotchas that, uh, that might be of interest to people. So. Uh, if you're using Docker, Docker. Of course, if you have more experience with Docker than me. I hope you all can share about this in the next, uh, in the future PHP meetups, right? Uh, so I hope. Um, are there? Do you have any guys have any questions? Any other questions about this tutorial? Uh, so yeah. Uh, the PHP images uh, of Docker Hub is uh, is it a minimal 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 uh, PHP installation or full stack installation? Yes, it's a minimum installation. So if you look at the docker, you look at the documentation. It actually shows you how to install uh, 
additional uh, stuff. So uh, let's see, go further down with Apache, without Apache. Okay, uh, right. Installing more PHP extensions, so you can just go through this. You can uh, essentially, there's some sample code here, which is actually meant for F, uh, PHP 7.0. So basically, you do the uh, installation and use Docker PHP extension install, and this will basically help you install the extension you need. Even, even PCL extensions can be installed this way as well. So if your, your, your uh, PHP in, uh, installation requires plugins or extensions that are not on, not on the, on the uh, base installation, you should use this to kind of prepare them. So you, what, what you, all you need to do is have your own Docker file, which basically uh, declares, and you just put additional, additional run instructions, which will install additional uh, software that you need in your container. Right? Once you have that, uh, you, once you've done that and you build the container, the container will now have that, it will be in that state forever. As in, you, will all, you will always have that, those files inside there until such time where you rebuild it or add, add new things to it. Right? So this will be a very good way to uh, create an image that is constant and then can be shared with anyone in your development team. So as an example, all you need to do is have, a, have one, ins one copy of Docker file that is shared by uh, your entire development team. So everyone just, uh, all you need to do is just run, uh, build the container and run it locally. Or you can actually have, have a centralized place. So what we do at, at, at SP is that we have a Jenkins server that basically checks out the Docker file, builds the Docker container and push it to a registry. So you can push it to Docker Hub, which you can then download and make it run on your local machine. So all your developers in your team can always have the latest version of the, doc, uh, the Docker uh, image. Right, which you can then use to, to run your code. Right, very good thing. Uh, and if you want to go even deeper, like uh, someone just asked about using databases with this, right? So one way you can do that is that you can include instructions on how to install Postgres or MySQL into your Docker file. That's one way. You can do uh, Docker Compose. Correct, which is what I'm getting to. So the second part is you can orchestrate multiple containers so what, what is recommended in, in, in the Docker world is that each Docker container should only one, run one process. So you should just spin it up and you should only run Apache, you should run Nginx, or you should run MySQL, right, and nothing else, right? So essentially you could actually mount, run multiple containers, one running the MySQL database, run one running uh, Apache, and you make them two talk to each other. So basically the Apache uh, instance uh, can then connect to the database on the other side. So to do this, you can, do, you can, you can spin up manually like what I did. I spun up two containers just by running the command line. Or you can use this thing called Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is a, a, a YML file, um, which basically you, you define everything that you want uh, to run both containers or, or many containers at the same time. Right? So the Docker Compose file looks a bit like this. So let's show you the example with WordPress. So, right, so, uh, so this is how it roughly looks like. So you, first of all, it tells it uh, what are the services that you need. In this case, it's a database, and the other one is a WordPress container. And basically, tells, you tell it that my DB con uh, WordPress container should depend on the DB container. And it's the image that, remember in the Docker file, we, I tell it which image, is, which image it builds from. So all Docker files, all, all Docker containers, start from somewhere, the origin, it's kind of like inheritance, class inheritance, you, all, all, all your objects, all your classes inherit from another class, right? So the same thing applies to Docker containers. Docker containers inherit from another base container, right? So in this case, we're in this, this container here is inheriting from the WordPress container, and the one up here is inheriting from my PHP, my, uh, my, uh, my SQL container, right? So when you, when you do this, you just, all you do is, write, is uh, have this file, uh, in your folder, and you touch, and you run Docker Compose up, right? Docker dash Compose up, and you basically spin it, spin up both the containers at the same time, and then they are then connected to each other, right? Through uh, they are basically sharing the same network address, right? So that's a bit more advanced topic, which probably sh I wouldn't cover here, but if you are interested in that, we can I can probably talk about that in a in future meetup, right? So yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Right, and it's, I think. Yes. So basically, what you can do is you can spin up one EC two instance, and then uh, run Docker, 
inside. The, once you have a Docker daemon, you can actually spin up multiple uh, instances inside there. But the problem is the port mapping. So basically, you need to make sure the ports are mapped to the correct place. Like right now, I'm, uh, I'm uh, for example over here, I'm, I'm mapping port 8080 and port 8081 to the to two different instances, right? You're running on production. You want some way of like mapping like a particular URL, right? Like say uh, website one dot dot com will map to container one. Website two dot com maps to container two. So that's actually outside of the scope of Docker. So Docker doesn't handle that for you, right? So for that, you probably want to have like nginx uh, or an Apache server that does a reverse proxy that will forward all requests to the container one or request to container two. So you have a virtual host, vhost one, that, that forwards all requests to con, uh, port 8080, for example. And then vhost two, that port, that port maps, that forwards all requests to reverse proxy to a uh, different container, which uh, probably at localhost.8081, for example. Right. Can you run the reverse proxy on a Docker container? You can also do that, yes. But then your that Docker container needs to then listen to port 80. Yeah. Okay. So. You could then basically instead of running Apache on your on your host machine your, you, to do this port mapping and sorry the, the the routing, you can actually spin up one Docker container that listens to port eighty to act as a main web server, which then forwards to the rest. So this is a bit of a hacky. This is a very a bit of a hacky solution. Uh, is is there are ways to work around this? There are actually uh, other other software that actually helps you deal with all these things as well. Uh, one that I have used in the past is this thing called Docu. So Doku is a platform as a service. Think of it as Heroku, but running on your local machine, and then you can use uh, you can use uh, and it runs Docker behind the scenes. It spins up Docker containers behind the scenes, right? So Doku is one of the so it actually spins up Docker. It creates Docker, and it also has an nginx server that actually acts as the reverse proxy, and basically all this runs in one Linux machine, right? So which is very cool. We really need to like. Uh, run multiple apps on the same machine. Uh, this is one way of do it, doing it. There are other ways of doing it as well. You want to go full out into, Docker, into the Docker world, there's also another thing out there called Kubernetes, which is, think of it as Docker but on steroids. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's, a lot more pow it's, lot, it's a lot more powerful. Uh, so I wouldn't want to go into this unless you really want that power, right? But if you're just still testing and, and working uh, and experimenting with this, you can start first with just plain Docker, and or you can use Docu, which is another option, right? <coughs> or you can use Docker Docker Compose. That's another way to do it. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, 